Hey, everybody. Joe here from Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Comment. Even if you say something shitty, we don't care. We need to get to like 20 million of those, and they're going to send us all a million dollars. Do it now. directions on your phone oh no that's not fun navigate hands-free with apple carplay straight up from long beach he's long beach sprocket he's in the house don't miss it joe's mini bike reunion podcast coming up next Hey everybody, it's Joe from Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. This is episode three, season nine. Got a great show lined up tonight. Long Beach Sprocket. I'm sure you've heard of him. One of the premier, I won't say promoters, but I'll say one of the premier figureheads in the LA street scene. I'm talking about ride outs. I'm talking about the drag racing crowd. But everybody who goes to my show knows him as well. Uh, Long Beach Sprocket. Check him out on Instagram. He'll be joining us shortly on the podcast. I just want to begin by thanking our sponsors, our friends over at Pioneer Car Audio. Don't get rid of your car. Just upgrade it with Pioneer Car Electronics. Check them out uh, online at pioneerelectronics.com. Our friends over at Small Engine Cams, the sponsors of uh, the Dyno, probably one of the more popular activities at the upcoming Joe's Mini Bike Reunion, which will be October the 12th. Yes, that's right. Mark your calendar, October the 12th. In beautiful La Crescenta, California at Crescenta Valley Park. We'll be there. Hope you're going to be there too. Uh, the website's open now. Uh, you can pre-register and save. You can uh, select from over three ways to become a participant. If you'd like to buy a booth as an exhibitor, who knows, maybe you want to sponsor the event. Check us out. Give us a call. Send us a smoke signal. We'll be happy to get with you. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good one this year. Uh, I had a chance to catch up with OG Mini Bike Paul last night, and it was good to hear from him. You know, Paul's in his 80s now, uh, stuck in his wheelchair, unfortunately, dealing with MS, but he's still got a great personality. We laughed all night, and I called him late. I went out in the backyard, you know, just like you guys. I get to that fucking point where my work's done. Took a couple hits off my pipe, called Paul. He was doing the same thing. This guy's fucking older than me. He's up later than me, and he was elated that I called him. Because all of his friends, the few that he has that are still alive, he says they go to bed at six o'clock, seven o'clock. He says he's got nobody to talk to. So he said, hey, do you mind if when we do talk, we talk late? So I caught up with him and we were talking about what he did back in the day and how instrumental he was putting on those mini bike rides in Camarillo and how simple everybody thought it was where you just call a few people up because there was no phone and there was no internet back then. You had to make an effort to get a hold of somebody. And he would still attract 50, 60 people, all the guys, uh, Charles, uh, Brian um, from F&B. All those guys would come out annually. He would bring a taco truck. He would open up his garage, uh, rent porta potties just for the love of it. He had no, he didn't have a fucking sponsor bucket of money. I'm fortunate I have some sponsors. He did it on his own. Maybe he had to pay for the tacos, but I you know he, he was he he was so important and I I try to think that some of what I do is in that same spirit. And I thanked him for what he'd done. And he thanked me for keeping it going. Because um it takes a person to do more than just talk about it. 
we see that all the time. Just think about the guys who say they're going to show up on the rides and don't show up. You know, there's so many guys say they're going to do something and don't do it. When you take that extra step like he did back in the day, you truly are an OG, Paul. And thank you for that. And hopefully what we're doing here is a reflection of uh, what's happening nowadays. Uh, my days are probably coming to an end, too. So just as I hear that from him, I plant the seed for many of you guys uh, who are ready to host your own event. Um, like I'm, I'm seeing things now where other podcasts are popping up and uh, events are popping up. A great event, the Pull Stark Picnic, uh, Mini Bike Ain't Easy podcast with um, uh, Jason and uh, Day Day uh, out of Go Power Sports. I'm seeing things grow and there's always a person or two that's driving it. And our guest tonight is one of those guys, uh, Long Beach Sprocket. Uh, wanted to have him back on the podcast. You may have seen, I think it was a season or two ago. Um, you know, Dave's one of those guys who likes to lay low. So uh, having him back on is always a pleasure. Good to have you with us, uh, Sprocket. How was your day so far, man? It's good. Um, I just got off of work. Appreciate for, uh, for you having me on. But, yeah, yeah. We, um, I think we tried this before. But you, like many of our guests, uh, you guys are hardworking blue collar guys. I see what you're doing. Uh, Long Beach Sprocket is a pretty stout mechanic technician. And I've been watching you work on all kinds of cars, Porsches, Suburbans, imports. What did you work on this week? To, uh, what didn't I work on? Anything of note? Usually you always share something with us on your uh, Instagram page. Uh, it's always European cars and I don't like European cars. Yeah. So throw me European cars. So, you know. Hey, I want to thank you. Uh, when I saw you at the last ride out, you, uh, your eagle eyes caught my, um, uh, my bad balding uh, tires on my wife's Mercedes, and I immediately put new tires on that. I actually bought four tires. I had it completely aligned, so thank you for looking out. No worries, no worries. Uh, the shit you must see as a mechanic. Oh, man. <laughs> Where you want to start? Well, who was the guy that you were dodging uh, when you were hiding in the back seat today? Oh, uh, that was a uh, 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 tool guy. You know, he sells uh, tools. Truck. Looking yeah. to sell you something or collect some money, right? Yeah. <laughs> Out the back door. Well, always a fun hang. Um, what's been going on with you? What's happening with First Pull Mini Bikes? I, well, everything's happening, but what's the latest? Well, uh, First Pull live out in, uh, I, well, I don't know what you say. Well, he lives he live out in uh, IE now. Okay. So it's kind of like, um, kind of different now. but In what way? We still talk around. Okay. So it's, it's, um, he's more into getting to work. So sure right now yeah well things change you know yeah. uh, it, it, it's not like you leave the hobby it, you just take a, a pause yeah I, I i see that also with our mini moto guys that ride with us you know you'll you'll be so used to seeing a group of guys and then all of a sudden they're not there you gotta remember it's a hobby you know you gotta get your personal life first before you, your hobby how important is having your personal life together a lot of people it's almost very make important because you know you could just delay it or not and i think it's gonna come back at you even harder don't you think you earn a hobby as well? You know, like yeah. I yeah, mean, like you earn that Saturday ride. You earn the hundreds of dollars you spent with the parts and the time away from the family. I mean, you, there there is a sense of gratification that when you're out there riding, it's not just acting the fool. It's that mm -hmm. this is this is we talked about this with um, with Ozzy. It's like therapy. Yeah, it is. It is. It's an, it's, it is an escape, but at the same time, you know, it's only a short escape. You still got to go back to reality on Monday. Well, uh, right out. <laughs> it, it's yeah, it's it's nice to see younger folks that have like those things lined up in importance because, you know, the rest of them, they're out there. They're waking up. They're getting high. and They're fucking around with their mini bikes. It's mm -hmm. like they ain't worrying about the money or next week or next month or whatever. And, you know, that day comes where. You know, it's a it, it's a tough one, but you're on track. Um, we were talking about how it takes someone with just a little bit more gumption and someone with just a little bit more than just talk to make a lot of these things happen, whether they're ride outs or whether they're meetups or whether they're events or mm -hmm. podcasts, mm -hmm. you're one of those talented guys. What is it about the mini bike scene that justified in your mind, all that time, effort and energy that you spend putting rides together, putting events together? I wouldn't call it talent. Like you just said, I would just say like, you know, time and effort. You put in the effort and see what comes out. What do people tell you about their experiences when they're on your ride outs? I see a lot uh, of guys coming up to you uh, like a superstar out there, man. Like the messages? Uh, I get good and bad. Like, you know, it was a great ride out. You know, 
or I ate shit and, you know, I broke some bones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, that's going to happen, uh, especially with how many guys on an average are showing up. How many mm-hmm. guys on your, I mean, you're, you're, you're hosting some of the biggest ride outs. Okay. Hundreds, right? Yeah. In some cases? Yeah. That That's a strong number. Like, that's, that's. That's a really good gauge of what's going on. So has it slowly kept growing and growing? Yeah, it keeps growing because everybody wants to ride with certain people or like um, wants to ride with a different style of riding. Sure. So it it varies, to be honest. You know, um, you host similarly to um, Ozzy and some others, Bing Flores, who heads up our Honda Ground lifestyle. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, picking the date, picking that route. Even the pain in the ass when you have 150 people and you say, where do you want to eat? Yep. And 50 of them want tacos. Yep. Who wants to go to Burger King? It's mm-hmm. like, Jesus Christ. I mean, I might just watching him work the event, you know, because you got to say hi to everybody indirectly. Yeah. Yep. You got to be there when. Directly and indirectly. You got to host the meetings. Like there's, uh-huh. you, you you really do have to give. You've got to give your time. Mm-hmm. You got to give it. You, you do that with with a smile, right? I see it. I mean, uh, you guys see a smile, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's not always rosy, is it? No, it's not always. It's it's never rosy to tell you the truth. It's always a hassle to me, or it's kind of. Um, it, are they consistent things? Are, are they complaining about well, it wasn't long enough, or you started too early, or what, what are some of the quote unquote bitchy gripes that you get? Just as an example, like what could be like the after you have a nice event, I'm sure 90 people are high fiving you, yeah, and then the other 10 percent, what are they bitching about? Bitching about um, how slow we're riding, or you know, oh, you didn't go as fast as they. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else? I mean, it, it is a cruise at the end of the day, <laughs> right? It's, it's not a race. <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's what everybody needs to remember. Yes. You're right. Mm-hmm. And you're there because you want to be, not that, yeah. you know, you're not forced to be. Mm-hmm. So they, they don't like, uh, you, you went too slow, you, what, you didn't stop as often, or you stopped mm-hmm. too much, what's mm-hmm. that? We're, we're taking too long at the gas station or, you know. You know, I do uh, want to stop you there. <clears throat> how, how do you get around that? Because You can't, we're, because we're like five minutes to go, and they're like, hey, give me 10 minutes. I, I'm, I'm building, I'm trying to rebuild, or I'm trying to fix something. Hey, Emmanuel, you can appreciate I'm this. Like, All right, I give you three minutes, so. We're, hey, three minutes, we're leaving. Our, our, so, you know, you, you got to meet in the middle. Our mini moto host, Bing Flores, is Filipino. Mm-hmm. And when he's with Filipino, five minutes is a lot fucking different than what five minutes is to us. Every, you know, everybody's it, five minutes is different. So, <laughs> so, and, and I watch that. So, but getting back to the gas stations, mm-hmm. that's a whole nother scene, right? There. So, so here, here's my advice. My advice is that it's easy to go to the 76 on Lake and, and whatever. I say just as you do your pre runs, find a corner. Because they're like car dealerships. There are there are places where there's four corner gas stations. Mm-hmm. Is if you can get to those, now you can feed four gas stations. Because when you've got a hundred bikes, especially when one guy parks right in the middle and he doesn't even need gas, and now it's all blocked up. Mm-hmm. Because I was there for an hour almost every time we we were there, and and that's honestly where shit starts to happen. It starts you know people start to get a little solo. Yeah. they're getting a little antsy. Yeah, yeah. People having just one more beer, smoke one. You know, so being in those gas stops for an hour, you start doing two or three of them. That's two or three hours out of a six seven hour ride. It takes up a lot. So, and and you and I chatted about the fact that um, where is it? Uh, <laughs> I may not have shared this on the opening, but. Uh, once again, here we're here with uh, Long Beach Sprocket, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. Uh, we were talking about necessities that you must have on rideouts, mm-hmm. and um, this is like that's real easy, real, real easy for for gas, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and here's here's what I'm saying, and we'll get to this a little bit later on in these series of videos. We're gonna have a list of what you should have, what we call must haves for rideouts, and I want you to help me with that, David. Mm-hmm. Um, there are um, they're, they're safe travel bladders, and they were designed for dirt riders, who uh, enduro riders, where there are no gas stations, and, you, mm-hmm. and there are no uh, support trucks. So you had to bring your own fuel. And they come in huge sizes, which attach to bikes, or small sizes that safely travel with you. I know... <laughs> You know, these guys are not going to buy a fucking $70 Kevlar bladder. No, they're not. All I'm suggesting, though, is that there are alternate means. Yeah. yeah. And we'll cover that as well as some of the other things that you think you may need um, on these rideouts that you're hosting. Let's get to it. Um, dates for your next rideout. Talk a little bit about the dates and the details, can you? Um, First Bull has a rideout on the 28th okay. of July. 
and I'll have my ride out in um, October, which is a Halloween ride out. Great. Um, I remember the cool decals from that. Talk about the Halloween ride out a little bit. What can folks expect? Costumes, you know. (laughs) I sure you got to have the costumes, right? Uh, The meetup, you don't announce that and uh, kind of uh, strategically to. We try not so that we don't get raided. Sure. Yeah. Are you finding that that's becoming more of an issue now? Are, are, are <laughs> short of, I think there was a rumor one time that I was actually a cop. I swear to God, I've heard that. And uh, <clears throat> David, if you look uh, behind there, you'll notice, see the overhauling uh, thank you mm-hmm. with the CUDA? Mm-hmm. And notice on the bottom, there's a business card. Yep. Uh, it says Joseph Bergandio detective. And I, I played a cop on that show. Yeah, I got to take a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, and, and I've, got, I've, I've had some, but I've, I've also been on a little bit of a rant of late, largely about, things that I've been seeing, not only online, but when I do go on these rideouts, and not only just with the Polestar guys, but with the Minimoto guys. And I'm getting fucking old, I admit it. And I am looking at things a little bit differently now than, uh, and I did act a fool. I had my time of doing that as well, right? I'm no different. But there are some things that I'm seeing, along with all the popularity and all the positives, there are some things that we're seeing um, that as a a ride host, I'm sure you deal with. Um, I'm... On the one spectrum, you get together with 200 of your best buddies, you catch a buzz, and you hang out, and you end up at the Santa Monica Pier, and it's the ocean. You get home at 5, 6 o'clock, you have a nice meal, you go to sleep, you had a really good day. There's another side that's not too fucking nice, and, 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 and that's something that I wanted to talk to you about. It has to do with folks that, have, that we've lost, fallen riders, people that have lost their lives uh, mini biking, people that have had serious injuries about that. And it, uh, it's happening way too often. And, and um, just as soon as you hear about it, you know, you'll hear about it because there'll be a, a, a ride that will recognize and not celebrate, but um, eulogize a fallen rider. And, you know, people show up and next, you know, yeah, you start off with a, you know, I'm really sorry. And then you're just back at it. It's almost as if the poor mm-hmm. fallen rider was just the name on a flyer. And you wonder if it had any impact. Uh, and, and, and I'm struggling with that. I'm sure that, 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 that has to be something that you're dealing with too. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your take on, on what you see, because to me, that's why I'm talking more about not acting as much as the fool and being prepared Mm -hmm. and, and having on a helmet because, um, dude, when you have hundreds of folks every other weekend, every other Wednesday, things can happen and we can avoid some of that if, if we talk to people about yeah, those things. Of what do you, what do you feel about that? I mean, keep in mind, you're not only hurting yourself, you're, you're hurting other people like your family and people who actually, you know, depend on you and love you. Yeah. 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 I mean, we lost people from presidents to riders to, you know, solo riders to all types of riders and that it hurts everybody. And a lot of folks, especially young guys full of testosterone and ego, mm-hmm. um, we're not going to worry about, I, I know how to ride. I don't need until, you, I, until you get hurt. Well, how about this? <clears throat> it's not always just going to be about what you did it, with a hundred of people there. You don't know what's going on with everybody. You don't know their mm-hmm. skill sets. You don't know their talent as, as riders. You don't know what they may or may not be listening to or mm-hmm. preoccupied and they can hit you. So it's, it's not just what you can do to yourself. It's what you can be affected by through others. And mm-hmm. you do have that risk when you're out there with hundreds of riders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how important is it to not only uh, stop to recognize these fallen riders, but what do you think folks can do to maybe learn from it beyond just coming out for the ride, recognizing the fallen riders? I mean, it, it, isn't there something that really can be more impactful or something that could really have some impact to reduce that going forward? Are there things you think about? Yeah, I think... Um most of these new riders just think it's just a toy and you know it's not gonna hurt them or it's not gonna cause any effects or anything to- towards them but at the end of the day this is like a, it's a handgun it's more, it's more than a hobby you know <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a risky toy if you want to call it a toy you know yeah most people most people call it a toy, but I call it a fucking a, a motorcycle. It is what it is. A we're motorized not, vehicle. We're you've not seen, going 25 miles per hour, what, what a lot of people think. You've seen the decals on anything with a motor. It could cause injury and possible death. I mean, it's there yeah. because ask any manufacturer about it. Well, so then a lot of it is with um, 
younger folks I've, mm-hmm. I've seen. I believe so. Um, so what do you say to maybe some young folks that we like? Like, uh, I won't name any names, but there's a SoCal dude. Uh, I know his mom. He's come to my event. I see him on all the popular Instagram pages, and he's always riding without a helmet. And I, and there's also that dude out in Hesperia who's selling mini bikes to all these newbies, and they don't know how to start it. And he's letting them jump on him and take off. They got no helmet on him. And, and I, I bitch about it because I care about it, but there's still so many folks that are naive. And, you know, giving them the mini bike without giving him the safety precaution. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you sell somebody a mini bike without making sure he's got a helmet? I saw that at Fast Lane. I saw it at Fast Lane when these guys are coming in, their dads are coming in buying them mini bikes, and they're leaving without a fucking helmet. Well, their parents should be the number one, the number one uh, responsible, responsible person. Yeah, to so, tell them wear a helmet before you get on that bike. So there it is. Um, the one thing should is, should be the shop or the person who's selling the bike. Well, look, um, I'd like to have a return customer if I had to lose one out of ten of them because they fucking because got the motorcycle good. dealership tell you, hey, wear a helmet. Well, I think mine yeah, did. They don't. But but yeah, I, I understand your it's point. Obvious. That's what yes, I'm trying to, say. It's uh, to motorcyclists because they're street legal and you know that they're meant for the road. I think the, I think the the misnomer is that mini bikes are just toys, yeah, just like that, jumping on your bike, mm-hmm. right? That's what a lot of people believe, and it's not a toy. And what's the truth? How 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 many horsepower are a lot of these bikes? 18, 20, 18, 25, 25, right? 30 plus. And, and a lot of them with a scrub brake. Uh-huh. You know, it's okay. It just, it, it's bizarre the way, it, it's amazing how you have one spectrum with the Jake Moe's and the Jason's and the uh, the big guy, Madeira, their caliber of builds. And then you see the bottom end. Mm-hmm. There's some shit showing up on these ride outs. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, I guess guys, just look, put yourself in his spot. Take it all the time, effort, and energy to pre-run, figure out where you're going, be accommodating, be there to help everybody, lead the pack, handle the gas stops, listen to the bitching, listen to the moaning, probably cost them a few hundred bucks every way, shape, or form somehow putting this together. Um, help him. Come prepared. Make sure your bike's not a rat trap. You know, come protected. Um, don't pass the lead rider. It's To his point, it's a ride. It's not a race. Um Bring appropriate tools for yourself so that you're able to get through the ride out. Um, make the effort that he's put into this worth it. Staying on the Fallen Riders, there's, there's, I know there's an upcoming ride with uh, the 605 mini bike game, but you've got some brochures on some other folks. Talk a little bit about those, yeah, won't we got you? Yeah, we got a couple of uh, presidents who passed away. We got, a, we got a rider over here who passed away. Who is this gentleman here? Um, he's a He's a... I see we've got a few of them. A over rider, here. and he's part. He's he's more on the racing side. Got it. Chop. Was this a result of a drag racing, a street racing uh, kind of a thing, or no, do we he know? He had do... passed away on a motorcycle. Okay. Accident. Well, it's a shame here. How about this gentleman here? He had passed away. Is this uh, Jay from TAF? Oh, okay, sure. I heard a lot about Jay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of impact. A lot of impact. Yeah. Um, who else? This is uh, another president. This is Glenn uh, G1. Okay. From Clutch Gang. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about not only these gentlemen specifically, but some of the other fallen riders, particularly those that are kind of in the SoCal world, uh, you can communicate directly with Long Beach Sprocket through his Instagram page. Yeah, well, so we we, we recognize this. Um, I see Taft Primo continuously recognizing fallen rider. Um, it, it seems to be happening way too often. Um, what is it? that folks still aren't getting what is d- despite the ongoing loss of these riders uh, do you think folks are, are are making conscious efforts to uh be better prepared ride a little bit safer uh do you think there are ways where you can influence these younger guys or is it still going to be one of these things where they've got to learn on their own yeah we, well we the, the the people who knows try to do it every day and try to show people and try to tell people every day the 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 ones who don't really, you know, don't want to grasp the the word of it, just do their own thing, really. Yeah, they don't really listen, you know. Well, teach uh, their own, you know. I I would say though that if you continue to uh, point out some of these things, that you, how many followers do you have on Instagram now? It, it just keeps 
blowing uh, up. Well, I lost my first page at sixteen thousand. Okay, this one's at pi- my second one's probably like at five thousand. I think. Nice. Check him out. Uh, you always got some good stuff there. Uh, what's your dog's name? I've got to find that out. East. East. Yeah. Um, I was gonna bring him, but. I, I, <laughs> I was almost I hoping was you would. Had a hassle. Well, no, he's he's, he's always he's so popular. We, we got dog dishes. We've evil edges to bring his dog over here before all the time. Maybe on the next one. Yeah, good. Um, so, what's uh, what's the rest of your summer looking like, Sprocket? Uh, work and riding, pretty riding. much. Yeah. Uh, do you get out every weekend when you ride? I try. Yeah. If not, you're down there at Anna Street, right? Yeah. If I'm if I'm not riding on the streets or on a ride out, I'm on I'm at Anna's. You know, we put together, in fact, it's in the background there, the top 50 mini bike personalities. I see both of your handsome mugs on there. Yeah, I don't know why I'm on there. Oh, you got good positioning, top right, too. I think I have to see if I can get Ozzy's signature. I should be on, like, on the backside of the poster. Well, we'll work on another one. <laughs> um, some, of the, some of the other planned uh, posters that we were considering were uh, top jockeys. And I also heard from more than one person at the reunion last year when we introduced that poster that he didn't want something with a bunch of dudes faces on there he would have much rather have had the the bikes mm-hmm. so i personally love the bikes but to me the guys the personalities the guys and the gals the people are that's what does it for me yeah so what makes the bikes too so that's why I did the people because that's more important to me. From what I've heard, all the other folks, they want to see the bikes. Either not in place of, but how cool it may have been with you and your bike. That's tough to do. That could be the next one. Yeah. So I'm thinking about top jockeys. Um, and it wouldn't be top 25 because I don't know that they exist. But definitely the top 10 would be a little bit tough. We'd have some haters. Mm-hmm. But I think we'll start there just because of that. And maybe you can help me compile that. You've been down there enough to see what's going on. Who are some of the top jockeys in your view? Uh, and don't this is not a who's who. I'm just curious. You know, a lot of times when people are on the podcast and they say, hey, would you like to give a shout out? Incidentally, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at F&G Welding. Um, not only were um, Ozzy, a 9286 who was on last episode, uh, he's a big fan of theirs and uh, recognize all the good efforts that they make out there. We were talking about how we'd like to see those guys maybe be with us at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion and um, see what they've got going on here. A lot of good things about them, particularly from, and and you know those guys over there as well. He got a bike, so he he might be popping out. Nice, good. Mm -hmm. Um, But we often, uh, guests feel like they're put on the spot, so you want to give a shout out. So, oh yeah, I want to give a shout out to all my boys at MBM. And then they realize right afterwards, they forgot two or three people. And some people are like, well, fuck it. I don't want to give anybody a shout out because everybody else will get pissed off. Yeah, that's but, how it goes. But yeah, that's how it goes. So who who are some of the top jockeys that you've seen of late? Uh, jockeys, I yeah. would say OG, Mike. OG comes up all the time. Uh-huh. Yep. You're talking about uh, Eastside Mike? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Home Alone. Yeah, Home Alone. Uh, Derek. Yep. Um, I hear a lot about D-Red. We had D-Red on a, a short little podcast. He seems to be popular on social media. Yeah. He yeah. seems to be counting a lot of money all the time. I, I haven't know. seen them pop out for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have, to, <laughs> we'll have to see what's going on there. Maybe he's not spending all that money. He's our own version of Conor McGregor, right? Yeah. Uh, who yeah. else is popping up out there? Um, Good jockeys. Yeah. There's um, a lot. There's, Woody there's talks a, lot. a good game. I've had Every, Everybody's a good jockey. Yeah. But what makes... Um, a better jockey. Yes. What makes a better jockey, Sprocket? Not, and who is not that? sleeping on a light? Who is it? Holding that throttle too, huh? Holding that throttle down, holding the bike down. Who holds it down? Who's holding it down better than everybody now? Come on. Somebody's popping up. I know it. All right, let's make who it easy. Who holds it down? Let me see. Who held it down last time? Because everybody's going to say it was me. <clears throat> you know, like they should. <clears throat> we'll come back to it. Yeah. yeah. How about this? Um, <laughs> Ozzy held it down. Oh, boy. That, that's you a got, tough job. Did you guys huh? see that race? I saw the race with Cleveland. And, that's and the last Ozzie. person who held, who held it down. Yeah. You got a lot of thumbs up on that. Cleveland was even giving uh, Ozzy props on that. I thought that bike was pretty much for the display window. Which bike? The 24 karat gold bike. 
No. <clears throat> yeah. Looks well, it looks like he he, he took it he took it off that bike yeah. off another bike and put the engine on a beautiful bike GT bike. Yeah. Or like that. And uh, Cleve bounced out and came back, didn't he? Yeah. He took a little pause for a little mm-hmm. while. Came back yeah. to the heavyweight. Well, we talk about that too. You know, he's a good example of it. You know, Cleve was top of the game, and then he just mm-hmm. he had to go do life. Yeah. You know, family and kids and. Yeah. I always call him Lamar Odom. He should always handle personal business before the hobby. Without a doubt. He's mm-hmm. a good example of that. He's a great guy. I like all those guys down there. We were talking recently on the They're podcast about um, how Fast Lane pursued their passion and how they're they, you know they're paying their dues and now they're they're a force out there we mm-hmm. recognize um mini bike tommy some of these other guys yeah. uh otai day day rolling out there mm-hmm. leaving everybody doing his thing you got to go out there and get it's yours first you have for, for the hobby pretty much plus a lot of what i've been able to do um to uh promote the event in the podcast is uh, uh the result of me doing my 35 years in the real world right so now I got to that point where I took care of my shit, I took care of my family, my house, and then you can go dick around and have some fun. Yeah. And that's the underlying that's the flavor. Way to have fun. It is. Uh, and we really do, you know, we talk a little bit um, about, you know, maybe the other side of it. You know, the guy's acting the fool, the guy's, you know, going too crazy, the guy's going too fast. But there is a core group of guys that we know we're going to see every time we ride out mm-hmm. where it, it, it truly is a brotherhood. It is. Yeah. It is. I think I, I appreciate that as much. You know, this, seeing Daryl. You know, what do you see him a handful of times a year? Like you see that guy, you spend a, a mm. half a day with him or a day riding. It's like good people. He Hard used, to come he by now. Come out on a ride out soon. He came out on a couple of my ride outs. Yeah, yeah. I think I was with him on, on the last one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I like I love riding with him. Um, plus, he's a great guy to be around when your fucking bike breaks yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was my go-to guy when I got left behind. I speak from examples as well. You brought some cool swag. We're going to be giving some stuff away, folks. Uh, all you need to do is like or comment on the podcast, and uh, there's uh, a random way they'll select a winner. We've got uh, some mini bikes are not a crime, Long Beach Sprocket, license plate frames. We've got some T-shirts. We've got some decals. Um, you've been uh, you've been doing a really good job as an ambassador out there. Uh, sprocket you've been um you're always pretty modest when it comes to these types of things i it wasn't easy i always feel like i'm twisting your arm just a little bit to get you out here but i do think uh, you, you have a good message that you 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 present and you are someone that these folks can depend on um and you are that type of guy i think that could take that to its next level uh what is that next level for you? Is it just continuing to maybe expand the number of rides? Uh, are, are you looking at maybe hosting in different areas like some of the other folks have done? What, what, what's what's the future or the future trend for 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 you? I really, I'm, I'm I'm really not sure. Okay, it's like to tell you the hobby has its ups, ups and downs, and sometimes I feel like giving up and sometimes i feel like staying in you know me too i was talking about how i really um didn't know and didn't have that that thirst like i did it comes and goes right yeah and um part of me as i get older makes it a little bit easier to say okay you know i I put in a decade i've done my deal excuse me um and then part of me is like when you go out there and you see people say hey joe Hey, let's do the podcast. Or, hey, when's the event? Oh, I'm building a bike for, you know, there's people that are already thinking about, mm-hmm. there, there's people that already started building bikes for the event that I wasn't even sure if I was having this year. Yep. And when I, when I talked to Paul last night, as I mentioned earlier, um, and I think about this going forward, it's like, dude, I'm 65 too. It ain't like I could be planning this for like the next 20 years. I'm lucky to have that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if those energies are going to be here. Um, that's why I do promote and recognize a lot of these guys who are out there doing their own podcast, doing their own rides. Um, do it. If I could be of any help, um, take all your 401 money, K, and give me a call. You could buy Joe's mini bike <laughs> reunion. After a couple more years, I think I got another couple more years in me. Um, Dave, um, you're running across a lot of people and you're dodging a lot of people. Um, but who are some of the folks that you maybe want to uh, recognize that uh, have been there for you over the last uh, last year or so as you make these things happen? Because I know that you have to depend on a lot of people, too. It's not just you. I mainly want to just, you know, give a shout out to my day ones, pretty much. Who are those guys? I would say First Pool, sure. Angel, Angel Bill, um, Day Two, um, Ozzy. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Day Day because of Day Day. I saw how I got to meet Day-Day you. Day Day as well. Yeah. He's been around since 
Ever. Have you much. talked to him recently? I would say two weeks ago. Oh, well, what's up? Yeah. I just just make sure he's he's doing good out, out there, you know? What do you say? He's doing real good. Good. He's loving it out there. Yeah. Yeah. He's a perfect match. Those guys were smart and yeah. calculated getting him. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, too. Is that the dude to host the podcast? He's I like what he's doing, the young mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, they're living it out there. Uh, one of our top states on the top 10 states for mini bikes and mini motos. Uh, the, you know, they do things differently out there. Mm -hmm. They're really in, embracing the drag racing scene. You can, there's so much space to ride on the street. They streets. got a track. They got an uh, official track. That's the thing. Could love if it. We dude. had a official track. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, if we there's could, no telling. if we could do something at Irwindale, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Well, we're uh, pretty much uh, heading down to the uh, end of the path of the podcast. Anything else that maybe uh, you wanted to uh, mention? Wear a helmet. Yeah, wear a helmet. Uh, ride safe. Be aware. Don't play music while you're riding because you're not going to hear shit yeah. pretty much. Uh, play a couple um, hours, too. You know, it's like just be in tune, you know, have a conversation. You don't need to be fucking on the phone now. It's when you, mm -hmm. the phone, only if it rings. And if it does, it should be on vibrate, right? Yeah, yeah. I got one more thing. Um, on ride outs, stop passing the leader. Yeah. Stop zooming by riders. Give every rider their space, you know, because a fall is a fall and it hurts. You had a little a solo bad. spill. How are you recovering from that? That was uh, our last ride out that I was with. I, I fell in December, and I'm still trying to recover, to be honest. My elbows are still, like, kind of shot. So I, I wear a variety of protective jackets there. And I had gloves on my hip. I usually ride with, with gloves, yep. and just that moment, I was not riding with gloves. I also wear um, strap-on uh, knee mm -hmm. protection. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only They're one. They're like Robocop. I, and, and I and, and I show up, I could tell the look. I get like- I'm the, next on that level too. I'm, 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 dude, I'm, I'm like to buy them. I'm like the guy with the shorts and the black socks. When I show up and and one guy, Ari, had already asked me, he's like, why do you wear those? You'll see why. <laughs> it's like, because of the unexpected. Mm -hmm. I watched the guy riding his bike, um, got hit with a flying pylon, just the, you know those orange cones. Mm -hmm. And the bottom was pretty sturdy. Guy in front of him hit it. It flew in the air. The black base, and like it got him good. It's like, dude, that, that's just a small example. He's he's hobbling around for two months. Like those mini bike, those um, the mini bike pegs were they'll they'll chew you up. Oh, you know it's gonna they'll happen. Stab you. Yeah, yeah. Certain etiquette, and you know that's a good idea, David. I think that um, a video on ride out etiquette, not only on what you need, um, but some of the rules of the game. Uh, it's been a blast, David. Uh, Long Beach Brock has been our guest on Joe's Mini Bike Reunion podcast. Um, it was a good one. Uh, the last couple podcasts have been more like uh, recognizing maybe some of the non-glamorous sides of uh, the hobby. You know, uh, people acting the fool, people not riding with uh, safety equipment, folks that have lost their lives, uh, people getting um, arrested. It should be recognized because it's how else they're going to learn, especially the new, new riders. You know, uh, I started to just understand that despite what I think this podcast is, which is really a house organ to promote my event, which is October the 14th here at CV Park in La Crescenta, uh, it, 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 it has, in some people's eyes, uh, become a little bit of a, a focal point and a voice. Uh, you can't deny what it may or may not be. Uh, often imitated, never duplicated. We're doing what we can here. Uh but it has become a topic that is worth addressing. I don't know that it's a bandwagon that we need to stay on. I think I'm going to be much more focused in on uh, some of the more positive, glamorous sides of it. But, you know, there's always a dirty side of Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. There's the size you see in People magazine and then the size you, you see when you're riding around late at night. We've seen both oh, yeah. sides of it. You've seen it. Um, continued success. Uh, thank you on behalf of the community for what you do as a, a host. Um, continue with those great videos. Uh, I love the dog. I love the food. Um, and thanks for sharing the goodies with us. We're going to be giving some of this stuff away. Once again, when you see the uh, uh, podcast, go ahead and like or comment. And uh, we'll randomly select and give away some cool Long Beach Sprocket stuff. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. Joe from Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. Don't forget, check out joesminibikereunion.com. Pre-register for the big event and save. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors, Pioneer. Small engine cams and studs racing. See you next time. And long live all the fallen riders. Long live all the fallen riders. How true.
Tchau!